By popular request today we are talking about MOSFETs, the other of the two major families of transistors. We have new videos every day here. Please check out the Patreon page and consider supporting the channel with just a dollar a month to keep this channel going. Uh, YouTube Apocalypse has completely decimated the revenue of small creators like myself. So without your help, these channels are going to die. Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to talk about MOSFETs, the other white meat. Two major families of transistors, BJTs, bipolar junction transistors, and MOSFETs. <clears throat> the MOSFETs were actually envisioned, created, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, envisioned by a guy named Lillian Feld, about 1925. But they weren't patented until about 20 years later by Bell Labs. And the MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transformer. Now, it's got a lot of different properties from a BJT, but it behaves in pretty much the same fashion. It can be a switch or it can be an amplifier. Now, if we take a look at the symbol for an end channel BJT transistor we have the base the collector and the emitter now we've gone over this in our previous video so I'm just going to touch on it so that we're all on the same page a small current fed into the base induces a larger current from the collector to the emitter okay and you're going to notice in this symbol here everything's connected in fact you can think of this transistor like this You can look at an end channel BJT as a pair of interconnected diodes. All right. Now, let's move on to the symbol for our MOSFET. This is an end channel enhancement mode MOSFET, which is the most common and widely used MOSFET, and it's used in just about every digital circuit today okay now instead of base collector and emitter we have gate drain and source now the two major differences between the BJT and the MOSFET are these. Let's write this down. Two differences. Number one, BJT is all about current. A small current into the base induces a larger current from collector to emitter. But with a MOSFET, it's about voltage. A small current into the gate induces a larger flow. A small, oh my, what did I say? Blah, 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 blah. Erase, go back three seconds. 
a small voltage into the gate induces a larger flow of current from drain to source and the MOSFET basically takes no current whatsoever to switch on so it doesn't affect the current of the rest of the circuit the second major difference BJT base is connected to the emitter in a MOSFET the gate which is the analog of the base is insulated okay you see here everything is connected you see here that space it is insulated so what this means is that when we apply a voltage to the gate it induces a capacitive charge which opens the drain to source path but because this is a capacitive charge when we remove the voltage this path does not close it needs to be closed manually and I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now okay I have two separate circuits put together for you here on the left which you will recognize from our previous two videos is the NPN BJT transistor low side switching circuit so we have our VCC coming through the LED which goes into the collector of the transistor the emitter goes to ground and then we have the base with a base limiting resistor current limiting resistor on the base so let's bring in some power with the base tied to ground nothing happens base tied high to VCC our LED lights but when I remove the base the LED goes off now over here we have a 12 volt car light bulb and here we have our MOSFET this is an IF IRFZ 34N International Rectifier MOSFET. Now the light bulb goes from VCC into the drain. The source flows to ground. And right now the base is tied to ground. The base, the gate is tied to ground. Now if I take the base and tie it to VCC, the bulb lights but when I remove it the base from VCC the bulb remains lit because of that capacitive charge and the only way to shut off the bulb is to then tie the base to ground so you see all I need to all I need to do is just the slightest touch and that bulb lights that's all it takes to turn on that MOSFET which is important in digital sig in digital circuits because you can turn on the MOSFET incredibly easily and then again the slightest touch to ground shuts it off so you have to take this into account in your circuit with the NPN BJT we can simply flick it on and not worry about it when we remove the current it will go off but because this is not about current this is about voltage and it'll hold that charge we have to do something else if we want it to behave in the same way as an MPN BJT which is we need to tie the gate to ground kind of like a pull down and in fact it is a pull down right here we're going to use a 10k resistor 
to tie the gate to ground. So now when I bring the gate to VCC, the bulb lights, and when I remove it, the bulb goes out. So in this case, you can do your rapid switching. So there is a very practical example. Now, one of the other things I want to show you is how simple it is to select a BJT for your circuits. Now, give me just a second here to set this up. Okay, this is the data sheet for the IRF Z34N. And you're going to see here our VDSS is 55 volts. So we can throw up to 55 volts in this bad boy. Now here is one of your key comp one of the key uh this word I'm looking for here. I'm at a loss for words this morning. Can't seem to speak right today. Anyway, <laughs> RDS on. This is the resistance from drain to source, and it is uh, 0 0.04 ohms. That is incredibly low. So there's very low resistance. Now we can come down here and take a look at our maximum ratings. And you'll see our continuous current gate to source is 26 amps. Our continuous drain current at 10 volts, 18 amps. And our pulse drain current, if we're just switching this thing on and off, we can hit it with 100 amps. That is incredible. Our VGS, our gain to source voltage, can be plus or minus 20 volts. So we can activate this with up to 20 volts. Again, incredible. So you see the advantages of this over the standard BJT. And this is one of the reasons that it has taken over as the most popular transistor in use today as opposed to the BJT. It's 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 stronger it's almost better in just about every way however it does have its downsides one of those is uh, thermal although in the case of this one let me find here uh, here we go our operating junction and storage temperature range minus 55 to 175 degrees C so this thing will operate at 175 degrees C without pitching a bitch I mean that's phenomenal now, if we're going to get up in that range, so you're definitely going to want to heat sink this or, you know, use some sort of other active cooling. And another thing that we need to be very aware of is that MOSFETs are incredibly static sensitive. Um, a static electricity shock from your finger to the gate can kill your MOSFET and you'll never even know why it didn't work. So we must observe static electricity precautions when dealing with them. But they're incredibly useful. They're incredibly simple to use. You gotta love a MOSFET, man. On is on until you turn it off. It takes no current from my circuit and only the slightest millisecond of charge to turn on that insulated gate and open up the, the channel from drain to source. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm out. Peace.